Hey everyone, welcome to West Coast Muscle Saws. This is a video for Keith. He's up in Alaska. Uh, his situation is uh, he's got a little steel chainsaw and he needs to cut some wood to keep his uh, fire going and stuff. He's up there with no electricity to speak of other than a generator in his shop and whatnot. He needs a, some parts to repair his chain. He's running the uh, little Pico chain it's called. It's a, low, it's a 3 8 Pico and his side strap is broken, the chain's broken, and he's wanting to know if he can repair that without using the uh, replacement parts that you normally use on these. It is doable, uh, they used to do it all the time in the 60s and early 70s, uh, and I'll explain it, but just be aware, the best way to do it is with the new parts, with the uh, side strap and the rivet strap and uh, the tools to do it with, but when you're in a situation like he's got now, he needs to get uh, that chain together and get some wood cut. And I'll explain how they did it in the 60s. This is just for uh, demonstration purposes only. This, this is some large chain. This is not what he's using, of course. And uh, his chain's broken. They, they break. Uh, it's common. Uh, they wear down. You'll see wear. When you're uh, looking at your saw chains, you'll see this sometimes worn clear down into the rivet. It happens. Anyway, what we're going to do is if you need to have a uh, handbreaker. Those are you can pick up at most hardwares and at uh, saw shops in your area. And uh, here, just a minute here. And uh, get you an anvil. Now, I, I don't use the punch they come with. It's a real poor quality. They're, they shatter, they break, uh, hurt your fingers. I use a snap-on punch. And this is a piece of fuel line here. I learned years ago if I was working on saw bars or anything else and using a punch, when you miss hit that, just glance off, if you don't have that insulation around there, fuel lines, all it is, slides on nice and tight, you're going to feel it all in your fingers and it's painful. So, with this piece of fuel line on there and give you enough room to use the punch, you're going to save your fingers. Just another little trick, you know, learned over the over time. Anyway, <clears throat> with that anvil, you're going to lay it in there flat, make sure it's not buckled or off center. And whatever's broken or still there, if it's the side, if the back piece is still in place and this is just split, you can lay, or if it's split in half, you can still lay it in the anvil using the driver as support. You might you got to make sure you got some support between that side links. If it's broke off at the, uh, if this piece is half there, right here, if this is broke off, just half of it there, you can still slide this in to where the side links are at and broken. Wear you some safety glasses. Keep those eyes protected. Slide that in there and give some port. And then what you're going to do, center it, of course. And you go glance it once with your hammer, hit it. You'll come right over here, hit it. Don't drive it all the way through with one on, on the first one, first glance, and you hit back and forth, and that will just pop right apart. Very easily done. I've done it hundreds of times. I repaired uh, one of those 12 feet uh, processor chains at uh, Roseburg Lumber out there on their pavement because they didn't have any tools or anything to do it. And I was able to do that and uh, repair it and use some new master links and uh, peen them over. Anyway, <clears throat> when we've got this separated and you found some used chain, you can, you know, if you got a used chain you're working on, used chain, you got it, you know, it'll work. You're going to use a side strap with the rivets in it on the bottom on a hard surface. And you want to have, if you have an anvil, great. If you don't, uh, you need to get something fairly hard, maybe two saw bars, little junk saw bars stacked on the on your bench something that's going to support some ball peen hitting side strap with the rivets pointing up and make sure you've got it in the right configuration don't have this top piece on the bottom make sure you get that so it rides over your sprocket nice and smooth you're going to put that one down you're going to put the two drivers on you can take the side strap and you're going to set it on there just a minute, I gotta grab another tool here. After you've set that one on there, and this is, uh, like I said, this is a large chain. I'm just showing it for demonstration. 
You're going to take a little socket like that, a very small one, and you're going to set it where those rivets are trying to come through that side strap, and you're going to gently bump it with your hammer, bump it with your hammer, bump it with your hammer, bump it with your hammer. You'd be surprised how much of that old rivet that's still to the side strap comes through. Uh, Oregon actually taught us how to do this in the 60s and 70s. I wasn't there till the mid 70s, but this was common knowledge for the timber cutters to do it this way and get through the rest of the day. Back in the 60s and 70s, timber cutters didn't come home just because their chain broke. Uh, they were there to make money, so they'd repair their chains. I've had them even rebuild chainsaws, do all kinds of work on the stump. Just amazing what they did. Okay, you've got that little bit of rivet sticking up through there. Then you're going to take your ball peen hammer. See if I got one here, guys. Hang on. You're going to take your ball peen hammer and you're going to peen, 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 peen on a hard surface. And you would, wouldn't believe how good a job you do on that. Like I said, best way to go, new parts. You don't have them. Improvise. You know, you gotta, you're not going to freeze to death out there uh, just because you don't can't put a chain together. This is, this is how you would do it. Anyway, that's for Keith up in Alaska. And uh, if you, any of you guys got any questions, you're more than, uh, more than welcome to email me. Might do a video for you. I don't know. We'll see what your questions are and what you got out there. Anyway, out here in the uh, Pacific Northwest, Willamette Valley, it's a beautiful day. We're a little chilly. We're looking about 42 degrees. Going to drop down to 17 tomorrow night. No real snow, just some icy conditions. Keith, good luck up there in Alaska and all my other timber cutter friends and woodcutter guys and saw collectors. Have a great weekend.